Towards the end of last year, we traveled to KZN to drive the new Chevy Cruze, and we spent the whole day trying to avoid the rain. Now we're in Joburg with another Chevy Cruze, and it looks like we're gonna do pretty much the same thing. The only difference this time around is that the car we have is a slightly higher spec, or that's what Chevrolet tell us. It's the 1.8 LT complete with auto lights and wipers, 17 inch wheels, park distance control and the optional sunroof. All those are good. It comes standard with leather, which is not that good, and a 6 speed automatic gearbox. And all I can say to that is, oh boy. First, the good stuff. By now you probably know that this is the new face of Chev and you've got to admit it is rather striking for this segment of the market and I like that about it. That individuality means it's not going to get confused amongst the millions of other C-Class cars that are doing the running around. Yes, the back is a little Asian generic but it's not horrendous by any means. No, horrendous is reserved for some mechanical bits on the cruise which we'll get to, don't worry. This top of the range unit goes for just over 240,000 Rand and the spec list is quite comprehensive. It's got dual zone climate control, multi-function steering wheel, electric windows all around, CD player with auxiliary connection. And while all of that looks good in a brochure, it's somehow let down by the details. I will say that I really like the look of the interior layout and the gloss black pieces with blue backlighting make for a surprisingly upmarket feel. But like I say, details, the rubber bits that don't seem to fit properly, the aircon control that gets in the way of your knee, and the leather. The cruiser's interior designers have given you two options with this car, bad and ugly. The cloth upholstery in the other cruise models has a mesh-like finish to it, and it's plastered on the dashboard, not too long before it starts looking grubby and wearing through. So you go for the leather, but be warned, this dirty grey option we have in our test car looks like it's been recycled a few times. There is one other option, and although I haven't seen it in real life, it's almost certainly better than this. Now this car is undoubtedly saved by its ride setup. I mean, we've driven it through all kinds of conditions on different types of road surfaces, and it always remains smooth. Okay, you can't exactly feel every inch of the road through the steering, but what you want in a car like this is lots of space and lots of comfort, and it's got that front and back. So if you're a bit colorblind and aren't completely anal about fit and finish, the Cruze may be a good option for you. There is a 1600 version available as well, but if the 1800 is anything to go by, you'd get around quicker on a pogo stick than in the 1600. Okay, maybe that's a bit unfair, but the 1800 is supposed to be the more powerful option, and it struggles. It's a four-cylinder unit with 104 kilowatts and 176 newton meters. Now, it is a little bit underpowered, but that's not the real problem with this car. The LT version comes standard with a six-speed gearbox. And, well, let me explain. In the great hierarchy of gearbox evolution, Volkswagen's dual clutch box stands at the apex. It is the most advanced of the species. Then there's BMW's SMG gearbox, which is slightly less advanced, sort of somewhere amongst the cave dwellers. But the auto box in the cruise has barely made it out of the primordial soup. There's life there, it has a few moving parts, but it's not quite sure how to put it all together so as to be useful. Let me explain it to you this way. When you start out it feels okay, and then it changes to second gear, and you think, okay, well it could be better. And then you get into third and you wonder where all the power has gone. So you put your foot down, and then it goes back into second. And then you're stuck in this whole evil cycle of a lot of noise and not much progress. And the whole thing feels really stodgy, like there's no gearbox oil, it's all lubricated by, I don't know, three day old mashed potato. And not the good mashed potato either. So, ruined by a weak engine and a bad gearbox. This car has got good things going for it, make no mistake, but they're smothered by some overriding flaws that just make driving this particular cruise something that's easily forgettable. I know that Chev are telling us that the 1.8 LT is the top of the range version, but I don't know, if you opt for the LS, you get a decent 5-speed manual gearbox and a better looking interior. Plus you save 40,000 Rand, and with that, you could buy just about all the extras you want.
On paper, the technical specs for the Cruise 1.8 LT aren't half bad. The engine appears to have ample poke and the auto box has six gears. The performance figures seem about on par with its rivals. Unfortunately, the reality of a peaky power delivery and a poor gearbox handicap performance, which compromises an otherwise smart, well-equipped and comfortable package.